In 2021, Ukraine won the Scythian Gold case. The Amsterdam Court of Appeal recognizes its right to the exhibits from four museums of Crimea. In 2013, the selected valuables were taken to the exhibition, first in Germany, then at the Allard Pearson Museum in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. But in 2014, Russia unilaterally included the Crimean Peninsula in its structure as a result of armed aggression. And the Allard Pearson Museum faces a serious problem – where to return 565 treasures of the Scythian era – Ukraine or Crimea? In June 2023, the Supreme Court of the Netherlands put an end to this case. It upholds the decision of the Court of Appeal. The Scythian goat from Crimean museums belongs to Ukraine. The court's ruling is um, that the artifacts have to be uh, brought back to the state of the Ukraine as they form a part of the cultural heritage of the state of Ukraine. Crimea is a part of Ukraine. It's only our national authorities who can decide to which museum should they return. For, for, as you know, Crimea is occupied by Russian Federation and we have no access to Crimea. We cannot protect our cultural heritage in Crimea. It is an unprecedented situation in European case law. The victory in the legal case of Skis and Goat gives Ukraine faith in the fair resolution of such issues, experience and strength to move on and take back what legally belongs to it, because so much has already been lost. The war brutally waged by Russia is killing Ukrainians, spreading destruction and burning down cities and villages. The Russians are fighting against our identity embodied in our cultural heritage, and the mere fact of them looting museums complies with the logic of the war against our values, against our heritage. Not only are they looting, but they are also deliberately destroying museums in some areas. This is a war against our cultural code and our values. The whole world is shocked by the barbarism of the occupiers who completely destroyed the Donetsk Academic Regional Drama Theatre in Mariupol, killing hundreds of citizens who were hiding there. A Russian missile destroyed the National Literary and Memorial Museum of Grigory Skovorodá in the village of Skovorodinivka in the Kharkiv region. The House of Organ and Chamber Music in Dnipro, the Kyiv Mala Opera Theatre and Cultural Centres in Mariupol, Ochtyrka, Irpin, and other cities were also damaged by Russian shelling. Libraries in Kharkiv, Zhitomyr, Chernihiv and other cities in Ukraine were damaged. The Queen G Art Museum in Mariupol was destroyed. The Russian aggressor destroyed the historical and local history museum in the village of Ivankiv in the Kyiv region, where the works of Maria Primachenko were kept. In total, nearly 600 objects of Ukrainian cultural heritage have been destroyed or damaged. The list of losses for Ukrainian culture and history is constantly growing. There is disappointing news from the occupied and already liberated territories. The Russians have taken away the Byzantine gold from the Hersone Stavria Museum Reserve, a UNESCO World Heritage Site located in the temporarily occupied Crimea. Other Crimean museums are preparing for the illegal evacuation of collections to the territory of the Russian Federation. The Melitopol Museum of Local Lore was forced to give away its collection of Skissian gold items. And the Kherson Museum of Art and Local Lore lost almost all of its exhibits. During the eight months of occupation, the Russian army raked out everything they could find from Kherson museums. Experts are not yet able to give exact figures, but the local history museum alone had 180,000 exhibits before the war. The Museum Fund of Ukraine has suffered millions of dollars in losses. This is the largest theft of cultural property since World War II. The display boxes were completely looted. Some items depicted the everyday life of the ancient Scythians. The most valuable thing here was a seat and gold ornament. It's gone too. They looted as much as they could. Everything was taken out. Everything is broken.
Russians. Russians transported the looted property from Kherson to Crimea, paintings from the Art Museum, masterpieces of the 17th and 20th centuries by French, German and Italian artists were spotted in Simferopol. Photos on social media helped to identify them, among other things. The Russian Federation started appropriating and destroying all that's Ukrainian not in February 2022, when it launched a full-scale war, or even in 2014, when the Russian-Ukrainian war actually started with Russian aggression. They have been taking away what is inherently Ukrainian for centuries. Starting as early as the 18th century, valuables from the territory of Ukraine were systematically, purposefully, gradually and in huge volumes transported and deposited in Russian museums. In the same hermitage, the Tretyakov Gallery, the Armory, the State Historical Museum and other institutions in Russia, in St. Petersburg, Moscow and other cities. A huge number of historical monuments that testify to historical memory and national traditions and are the national pride of the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian nation and the Ukrainian state are located on the territory of a foreign country. First the Russian Empire and then the Soviet authorities stole items of Ukrainian cultural heritage in echelons. Soviet officials did not even try to hide the theft of valuables, they legitimized them. These monuments are of tremendous value for the exposition of the State Tretyakov Gallery, in which the art of Kievan Rus is very poorly represented, despite the significant importance that it has in the overall development of Russian art. From a letter by Felix Kohn, head of the Museum Department of the People's Commissariat of Education of RSFSR, to Volodymyr Zatonsky, People's Commissar of Education of the Ukrainian SSR. For Moscow, ancient artifacts of the Kievan Rus mean a connection with the medieval Ukrainian state. And the Scythian monuments that Russians fought so fiercely for in the Amsterdam court, under the guise of protection for Crimean museums, are a pass to the club of European countries with rich history. The Scythians, who came to the south of modern Ukraine around the 7th century BC, were in active contact with the Greeks. Herodotus wrote about them in his work of history. Therefore, due to the proven connection with the Scythians and Crimea as a zone of Greek influence, Russia desires to be considered a country of European civilization and engage in a cultural dialogue with the West on an equal footing. The removal of Scythian historical treasures from Ukraine began in the 18th century. In particular, during the excavations of the 1730s, these treasures were taken to Moscow and St. Petersburg. Further, such things continued in the 19th century. We recall the order of the Tsarist government according to which jewelry had to be taken out of the south of Ukraine during the Crimean War of 1853-1856. Let's recall, in addition, the famous Scythian comb found during the 1920-1913 expedition in one of the moons in the south of Ukraine. This Scythian comb is one of the most valuable items in the Hermitage today. In St. Petersburg, they also store the most valuable find from the Chortomoyk Mound, discovered in the 1960s in the Dnipro region. The silver amphora weighs in the work of ancient Greek jewelry art, 4th century BC. The golden cover of the Goritas found in the Melitopol Mound in 1954 was destined to remain in Kyiv. Oleksandr Pawadin, president of the Ukrainian SSR Academy of Sciences, ordered that the relic not to be sent to the Hermitage. This artifact marks the beginning of a new stage in the cultural life of Ukraine. The Museum of Historical Treasures was created in the Kyiv Kyiv Monastery, and exhibits of this significance were kept there. The strong-willed decision of the head of Ukrainian science to take care of our own rarities ourselves decided the fate of one of the most outstanding finds of the 20th century, the Golden Scythian Pectoral. It dates back to the 4th century BC and is on par with the tomb of Tutankhamun in terms of its significance. When the Tostamohiva Mount was excavated in the Dnipro region in 1971 and this breastplate of the Scythian king was found, the Museum of Historical Treasures in Kyiv was already operating. 
so after the restoration, Moscow had to return the exhibit back to Ukraine. You can see the golden pectoral only in Ukraine now. It is not allowed to be displayed abroad, just like Heyman's chalice. Even Hitler's Ananerbe, a society for studying ancient Germanic history and anthropology,